Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morata. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is DeLon Jay, and you're watching The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Delon J, man, it's cool to have you on. I uh, was looking, you know, doing my research and everything. You do a lot of things. You uh, are yeah. a writer, an actor, a musician. You're also a, uh, I guess you would say a coach or a course writer of, of sorts. And it seems like you're an author, a little bit of a ladies' man. You're a lot of things, man. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think uh, art's all the same. So I think the avenue that you express it in is, I would consider all of those one thing, in my opinion. You know, like writing movies and, and music are kind of, to me, like all one batch of things. Mm -hmm. But you've written a thousand songs, so that requires yeah. some discipline and some, I mean, it's one thing to play a, a musician or play an instrument, but you're creating on your instrument a lot. And so that, that indicates to me that maybe there's a uh, heart there more than, say, some of the other things. The other things are interests, but you're driven to do the music thing, or is that incorrect? No, that's actually right. I was a musician. I started DJing when I was 12. I didn't even really know about playing an instrument until much later. Um, I fell in love with dancing. I kind of, I mean, I kind of, it all kind of based around, you know, culturally just Sri Lankan culture and music is, is close, but we're more of a listener than we are the players. So I never really thought I would be a player or a musician, but when I became a DJ, I became kind of like that middle step between being a guy who makes the music and being uh, and between the guy who listens. So kind of start of the journey, I guess, you know? Yeah. I want to ask you about the Sri Lankan thing because you're a California native born and bred, but you're, I guess, first generation. Um, your That's right. How much of you is Sri Lankan? How much of you is American? I mean, because you, you, I can see you walking around. I can see your pictures. You're a California kid. I can see, I, you didn't have to yeah. tell me that I can see it, right? But yet, <laughs> yeah. and, and yet you're Sri Lankan. I mean, it's part of who you are. Yeah. Can you? That's a good. That's a, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I'll tell you like this: when I'm in America, I don't feel American. I feel Sri Lankan. And when I'm in Sri Lanka, I don't feel Sri Lankan. I feel American. So right. that's kind of the plight of first generation Americans. It's yeah. like we. We're so connected to our culture, but we're still so American because when we go back to our culture, we're like, man, this sucks. This is, go back to L.A. Yeah. So <laughs> you know? when you go to Sri Lanka, do they see you as Sri Lankan or are you 100 percent American to them? Depends. If I speak Singalese, they're um, like just another Sri Lankan. But I got really famous there. So a lot of times everybody knows who I am. So like then they see me as American. But if I was just hanging around. Also, I'm like more fit than most Sri Lankans. Yeah. You know, like, um, and so therefore I look American in that way to them because uh, even while well, my hair is shaved, but like usually, you know, you get a nice fade, like that's not Sri Lankan, you know, yeah. that's not, that's not a third world thing. Like go to a barber shop and get a fade. They won't do that. And from my experience being overseas, you can see the health in terms of the food quality that you have access to or the quantity even. I mean, I, I've not been to Sri Lanka, but I've been to a lot of places where there's just not enough food and there's a different look to the, the human form when it's often malnourished, you know? Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because actually it's getting worse now, but believe it or not, like 20 years ago, the food was better in Sri Lanka than it was in America because America's filled with preservatives, yeah. right? Everything that we eat has a preservative in it. So Americans tend to age a lot faster than third world country people because even though they have less food, they have better food, food that came out of their own backyard, grain, all that stuff is just better for their body. But now because of the advent of like, you know, big business like McDonald's and, you know, Burger King and all this trashy food it has come to our country. So we're kind of like now we're having like before we had the best of that and the worst of that. Now we have like the worst of both sides. We don't have money and we have some shitty food entering the country, which sucks. You spell your name Delon, I-L, like Milan, but sometimes it's D-Lon, like D-E-L-O-N. 
is that are they? I mean, come on, man. You not only to have one name, you have two one names. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Yeah, because know why. in America, if I spell my name D I L A N, they call me Dylan. Right. So I was like, let me spell it phonetically when I become an artist, so people would actually just call me Delon. Mm. So then I spelled it D E L O N. So people would call me Delon. And then what happened in Sri Lanka is they go Delon. Mm. Delon, Delon. I was like, no, it's Delon. No, 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 Delon. I see the D E L O N, Delon. <laughs> I fucked that up too. I don't know. You just never know. You can't win on both sides. <laughs> you can't win. I want to go back to this uh, Sri Lanka versus America thing because this stuff fascinates me. Because we often uh, here in America, you know, we, we are self loathing. And, um, you know, because I'm white, I am this uh, great colonizer and I'm not allowed to belong to here. I'm Caucasian. However, you and I both know if I was to go to the Caucasus Mountains and say, I'm home, they'd be like, who the fuck are you? You know, that's right. You don't even know what village you're from. So, so yeah. at some point you're from somewhere and you're not from the other place. Like you're not part of it. Yes, you're a Sri Lankan, but that's different than like, you know, that you will never, your, your presence will never trump somebody who is born and bred and has you know, lived on the mean streets of Sri Lanka. You That's know, right. What do you make of all that? Like how, when do you belong to some place? When do you not belong to some place? Does it even matter? Is there a higher level of uh, understanding that? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. So I went through a lot trying to understand where I was from because being Sri Lankan wasn't enough. And I found out that we had some history from the Kafirs which are African. We had some history uh, uh, from the Moors, right? Like when they were like all over the whole world. And, um, you know, I went through this whole mess of trying to understand my background. My dad's, my grandpa's six, seven. He looks like a big ass black dude. Wow. Um, my dad's six, two. Mm -hmm. I'm five, nine. I'm like the smallest guy in my, but I look more, you know, I look more black than anybody else in my family. Like my brothers look really typically Sri Lankan. Like I can look Hispanic, like a lot of, because I speak Spanish. So a lot of people think I'm Puerto Rican or a different Wait, race. Puerto Rican? Si te hablan español, me vas a entender. Yo soy quince tortugas. That's my standard. So I think I went around in a circle only to realize that that kind of doesn't matter, dude. Who gives a shit? Honestly, like, it, does it matter that I'm Sri Lankan? No. In fact, I had a record label called Salon Records, which is the old name of Sri Lanka. And I changed the record label name to Halcyon, Re Halcyon Media Group because it doesn't matter where I'm from. If you like my music, you should like the music. My story of how I made my music becomes interesting after you like my music. You shouldn't like my story and then like my music. I can't really make sense of that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You should like my music first and then wonder where I'm from or like, who is this guy? So you, you know what I mean? A citizen of art as opposed to being a, a resident of some other place. If you're not an artist though, you're sort of pegged, but like, I see these crazy things where people are just so conflicted. This uh, lady on Twitter, you know, there you go, Twitter, but she's living on, you know, whatever, Inuit land or whatever. Like, you know, she's claiming this, like, I'm just borrowing this place. Like, Come on, man. We got to be from somewhere, you know, like you can't resolve all these past conflicts of history because, you know, the Moors were everywhere, right? Like <laughs> they went everywhere. They conquered everything and then they didn't. And I, I think you can get lost in this, but I think you're right about the art thing. You can just be like, this is my art. You can belong to it if you'd like. Yeah. And also like, I think like just being a citizen of the world is kind of more important anyway. I'm definitely like an LA boy born and raised, you know what I mean? But I'm not from the L.A. hoods. I'm not going to claim a gang. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to get myself involved in some crap that I'm not interested in. You know what I mean? Which is why, like, I halfway, like, stopped rapping. It's like, I'm not interested in claiming some background that I will protect for the rest of my life. Because it's not true. I, I was a Los Angelian until three months ago when we couldn't go anywhere. And I was like, go fuck yourself. I'm out of here. I'm not fucking going to claim this city and die here just because somebody won't let us go outside. Yeah. Fuck no. I'm out. Peace. You I'm know what I mean? Tell you, you're not going to get sick at the beach. Does anybody not automatically social distance at the beach? Oh, excuse me. Let me scooch in right next to you here. We sit at the beach. Bro, I have a picture of people in Florida yesterday all sitting next to each other at a bar. Like, nobody gives a shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, look yeah. at this picture, okay? Yeah. Look, at this, look at this photo. I just took this. I don't want to post it because people get so mad at me. Yeah. Okay. This was like two days ago. Who gives a shit? Like people have an opinion, right? So like people, they exercise their opinion the way they want. 
And I think that's a great thing about the United States is like different states, different opinions. If you don't like the opinion of that state, go somewhere else. <laughs> so I don't like the opinion going on right now. So I left. Let's talk some more California real talk. You've been to Florida. <laughs> You've been, you grew up in California. Who's got the better beaches? Florida, dude. I saw 100%. It. It's so true. 100 one hundred percent. It's warmer. It's so nicer. Much you can go in the water. Yeah, you can go in the water. I mean, I, look, I love LA. Like, I'll never not love LA. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, one of the advantages, one of the greatest advantages of being from Los Angeles, especially at well, as anything, is that you have the best of the best there always. So if you so so you know the level of competition you actually have to be at in order to be the best. See, a lot of people, they don't even get that chance to know what it should, should even sound like or look like or feel like. And if you have that kind of inbred in your system, it's really hard to like not keep that standard in everything you do, even business, even real estate. The amount that we, like I own a real estate fund, right? And the amount that we have to attack buyers to get something in LA is insanity. It's insanity. Like the, the type of like focused attention we need to have to buy something is insanity like we can't miss like that like that yeah. like that yeah. and it's gone right so any business is, is you're going to get the best there so i think for that la is really good for me personally i think la is where you do things i think you should go and create things in other cities mm. because there's too much of this yeah. in los angeles everybody's going a million eyes you can't sit down and create something in that craziness it doesn't work that way yeah, you're right. Like some in some ways you need to be here, but so many people, especially like you, like you know how nice California is. And I'm not not I love California. Um, but the beaches aren't better. And the yeah. living conditions aren't better. The uh oh. the stress, I mean, I'm not a political person and I'm inundated all the time with that, you know, and it's like Yeah, I know. That's not better. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, I agree. And how many, I mean, how many people do you know just from Hollywood, LA area who are like, I'm going to go live in Tennessee. I'm going to go live in Utah. I'm going to go live in Texas and I'll, I'll fly in. It's not, I mean, and literally end up with more money in your pocket living condition wise, because you can buy a home, a home in Florida for something less than a quarter million dollars, you know, that's correct. And then just spend $20,000 flying to California to get what you need and then leave. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. I think back like in the eighties, nineties and and even like the early 2000s, there was still like a fire in Los Angeles where people were, were culminating as groups and, and creating things. And, and it was like the place to be. You know what I mean? It really was. But I don't necessarily think that's the case anymore because I think all the people just showed up there and it's just packed. And like you can't – everybody is somebody and nobody is anybody. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I so like to, yeah. to try to find like somebody of substance, like I'll give you a great example. Here's a really great way to, 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 to show this in an example. In Florida, if you go out and play, right? Right. I see you got your guitar. If I, if I go out to Florida, I'll go out with this. Okay. Yeah. If I'm going to play, I bring my guitar and I'll play. You go to LA and either you sing or you play. Yeah. You don't sing and play. <laughs> Why is that? Because LA has become so competitive that it no longer creates an artist who can do both. Either you're a singer or you're a player. Got you it. can't do both. You can't, you don't have no time to create on both sides. Yeah. I went to LA. Uh, when I came back to LA, I went and did some open mics. I realized how ill equipped Los Angeles are to be singer songwriters. Yeah. But how great they could possibly be as pop artists, which means that you need someone else always. But in L.A., it's so hard to find someone else because everybody is for themselves. It's it's super <laughs> niched out, too. You're, you're right. Like, you can't be a singer songwriter. I mean, there are some, but there are 20 of them and all those jobs are yeah. taken and all those people yeah. in Laurel Canyon or whatever. Right. So, yeah, you're right. It's built out in a lot of artistic ways, you know, like it is weird that you write, act, direct, create anything you want, but that's not weird if you're from Florida, you're like, yeah, yeah. this is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Of course I write my yeah. own soundtrack. I'm a musician, you know? Exactly. You go to Tennessee, there's not a single person who doesn't play the guitar and sing. <laughs> exactly. You go to, 
Yeah, I do. I mean, when I went to Na- when I went to Nashville, everybody plays and sings. When you go to LA, they don't play and sing. Either they play or sing. It just goes to show you when it's niched out that it's 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 so packed out and so competitive that you have to just pick one thing and try to be good at that. You know what I mean? And that's not. I mean, for an artist, that's not a place to like. I don't know. It's not a place to like advance or or, or not advance, but it's, it's not a place to. Um, to be truly creative without feeling like someone's constantly right behind you, lighting a fire up your butt. That's not how you create. You can't create that way. It's just not possible. Yeah. It's really hard. One of the things that we've learned along the way, we had Allie Willis on, she's a hall of fame songwriter. She left us a couple of years ago and that's unfortunate because she was such a creative soul, but she did what the fuck she wanted to do. She was a straight artist, but she was yeah. so good at writing songs. And you'll recognize some of the songs she wrote because again, she's in the hall of fame. She wrote September for earth, wind and fire. You know, I love that song. That's like one yeah. of my favorite songs. In the Stone. She wrote all these incredible songs. She's written songs. I, she sold so many records. But because she was so good, the phone always rang. And don't you dare say no. Don't you dare right. say no. You know, so you have your, your, so you're the thing you love and you're so great at, you end up, you have to learn how to tame it. Cause if you say no, you have to withstand the head. You know, she's not really into working right now. Like, and it'll change on you in an instant. And that's a problem. Mm-hmm. The other thing too, and I wanted to get your comments on this. I, I was, uh, so I guess, I don't know how well you know Jay Moore, but Jay Moore and I are friends. I saw a picture of you and Jay. Oh yeah, Jay, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so we're friends and I used to help him make his show. And so I would go down to Hollywood and help him, uh, you know, do his podcast. And one of the times, um, you know, there's some scheduling thing cause they're all stars. So they're all fucking late. Right. And so Jay was recording and. Someone came in like, oh, oh, how long are you going to be? And I'm like, I'm not in charge of this. I, Jay is the one creating. It's his show. I, I don't know. An hour, maybe? You know? And like, well, Heather's here. And I'm like, I, I don't care. And like, oh, she's a big deal. And I'm like, I kind of think I'm a big deal. You know? so, and it was Heather Debro, And no knock on Heather. She's got to do what she's got to do. But, well, she brings in a lot of money around here. And I'm like, yeah, again, I don't care. It, I have no say over what Jay does. Jay is working right now. When Jay is done working, you can have the room. You know, if, if you work with Jay, you know he might be late. That's just how it is. But it was, it was uh, almost insulting. And then I met Heather Debro, And mm-hmm. you know how this goes. Like, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. Already looking away before she even, like, couldn't slow down long enough to look me in the eye and be a nice person, you know? Yeah, but that's Los Angeles, man. That's what it I'm is. like. It is. I can't have that. I can't have that anymore because I, I'm not that type of person. People don't say hi to you when you're running. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just on the street. People don't say hi to each other. Yeah. You know, everybody is too self-involved. And I don't think that's a good culture to – I don't think that's a good culture to be creative in. I don't think that's a good culture to live in definitely not a good culture to raise kids in. You know what I mean? I just don't, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't subscribe anymore to that style of, of living. And I also didn't know I had a choice to be honest with you because I'm Sri Lankan. So when I was born here, I was born in Los Angeles. So I thought all of America was like the shit stick we call LA. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I, I realized when I went to the South, how different people are. They're just like the immigrants, uh, you know, from every country from every small country. They're nice. They invite you into their home. They let you eat some food. They're on Sundays to hang out with their family, like real Americans. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's American culture. You know what I mean? Not what we see in Los Angeles. What we see in Los Angeles is big city culture, right? Yeah. So you get it in Miami, you get it in Illinois, Chicago, you get it in New York, same type of personality where people are court and you know, they need to do their thing and their thing's more important. And this is, nah, I'm not interested. <laughs> one more real thing just to kind of and we're bashing a little bit on la la is wonderful in its own right but in these areas it, it has a lot to be desired dc is similar it's like who are you what can you do for me looking over your shoulder as they're talking to you looking for somebody else to talk to you know in la right i've gotten that so many times and i'm like hey you know i'm still standing right here in front of you you haven't even said hello to me and you've already dismissed me so you know, go fuck yourself. Now, that's not everybody in L.A. I've met some wonderful, wonderful people in L.A., super creative folks who they don't mind being in the big leagues and doing what they do there. But it's, um, you know, that's a special. Yeah, it's just hard to find it. It's just harder to find. That's all. Yeah. 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 No, and, it's and just harder to find. You get a little cynical and a little jaded and if, I, I, no one wants to live life that way. So if you need to move to Florida, then then awesome. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I yeah. was kind of forced out at this point because I went back to L.A. after the film was done because it was supposed to come out last year. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, I thought, OK, cool. I have my agent, my manager. Let me come here and, and do a bunch of auditions for major films and, you know, work, work this angle as a as an actor. And then, you know, COVID hit and like everything just kind of just got washed away. Right. 
because now the film's coming out, I want to say April, okay. April 9th, the film comes out. Right. So, so, you know, I don't know. Like, I think what you said is, is actually true. Like I might as well spend $20,000 flying here when I want to and, and live for half the amount. Like, you know, I'm selling my house, maybe 2 million bucks. I can buy a house of the same caliber for a million bucks here. Also just like, I don't know. And at the end of the day, it's what you choose, right? It's like what you choose for your life. When I was in high school and college, I was into the competition. You know what I mean? Fighting with the competition, right? I ran track for USC, so I loved competition, right? I went to a division one track school and I was interested. But, and when I was a rapper, like a hardcore rapper, it was good that I was from LA because I got really good fast. You know, I, I used to go to Crenshaw Project Blow every Thursday night, freestyle battling kids, you know what I mean? Boys in the hood, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't have got that experience in Florida. No way, unless I went to Miami. So, and Miami would have been more, you know, Hispanic, whereas LA was just more black, right? If I'm in Crenshaw, it's just more black. So, you know, as a rapper, it was good. But now, like, you know, as a band member of a band and an actor, you know, and someone who loves his girlfriend to death and, and loves being at home and working from home, you know, and writing scripts, and it's not necessarily necessary for me to be in the city, you know? So I think it's also like a timing thing, you know? So, like, I just wish that energy that we used to have in L.A. where people were still kind of, like, burgeoning was there because it's not there anymore. And I've looked for it. I've lived in like seven boroughs. Okay. I'm gonna tell you where I've lived. I lived in South Central, obviously, because I went to USC, but I lived not at USC. I lived on like 34th in Vermont. So I lived in just dead end South Central. Then I lived in MacArthur Park off of uh, 7th and um, Bonnie Bray, which is hood as hell. Then I moved to Mid Wilshire where Larchmont is. Then from Mid Wilshire, I moved to West Hollywood, third and Sweetser, if you know where that is. Yep. It's like next to La Cienega, third and Sweetser, where La Plancha is. Then from there, I moved to uh, the artist district. So I was on Temple and First, or actually, it was not Temple, uh, it's like Chevy Chase. No, not Chevy Chase. Ah, uh, shit, I forget the name of it. It's over that way, the artist district. And then from there, I moved back home because I lost all my money, had to start over. Then after that, I moved to North Hollywood. So I was in NoHo. Then from there, I moved to Westwood. And then from there, I left to Florida. Then I came back and moved to Tarzana. So I've lived in nine boroughs of Los Angeles looking for that feeling where I felt like this is where I want to live. You know, I just can't find it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try a different city. <laughs> and then you found out, hey, I don't got to attend each of these meetings in person. I can submit <laughs> auditions via my iPhone, you know. Yeah. I really can go live wherever I want. And by that, I don't mean Palm Springs. I mean, anywhere, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, and like, dude, it's, it's actually really fun to explore the world. I've been to like over 35, 40 countries. So like, I don't know. It's kind of, and, and you know, the one place I never got to explore was America. Like I've explored all over the world, but never America because being Sri Lankan, we travel internationally always. We don't travel America. We're not American. Right. So we don't go, Hey, let's go visit our cousins in Tennessee. No, it's let's go visit our cousins in France. Let's go visit our cousins in India. Let's go visit our cousins in Australia. Right. So it's different. So I think I'm more American now than I was even as a kid, you know, because now I've seen New York, I've seen Tennessee. I've played in these places. I've played in the Midwest. I own property all over the United States. It's just, uh, I, I definitely feel more American. And my girl is so American. She's, <laughs> she's born, she's from Illinois. She's born in Watsika, Illinois, which has like 2,500. She's like country, <laughs> real country, you know? Uh, so, I don't know, things change, bro. I like it, but I like that things change. You know, if people want that competition in Los Angeles, so be it. I love it. Go ahead, man. We're knock it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Knock it out. Do do what makes you feel happy for that now. For me. Thing, right. Yeah. That's where the major yeah. corporations are, but the, you know, you can make a movie anywhere. You can get hired anywhere and, and you're right. And then one of the things, and I got a chance to do a coast to coast. I love driving coast to coast. And so whenever there's an opportunity, I take it, but I did a charity drive from here out to South Carolina and back. And if you don't like America, go live it. 
go drive around it go be in it because the south is wonderful the midwest is wonderful but you have to go everywhere yeah. you know it's easy to be you told that it's horrible but it's not when you go out to it it's not dude it's gorgeous america is gorgeous the amount of different types of planes and 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 terrain that we have in america is like unbelievable we have everything from the snow-capped mountains to complete desert we have beautiful like tennessee is like one of the coolest places because it kind of bridges in between you have these beautiful springs because we were there we were there during fall and we, we beautiful fall i don't know man south carolina was nice i mean I, the i like the feeling of something burgeoning tampa something is burgeoning here you can feel it you can feel the energy in the city new musicians are coming here every day new people are moving to tampa every day yeah. you know the, the i live right behind all the restaurants on the street called howard where we you would akin that to maybe like melrose except like melrose is really ghetto now but like a let's say like it was like beverly hills but like the streets kind of like melrose you know what i mean yeah, yeah um so you know i think it's good to explore i think it's good to explore for lots of reasons one especially because you give yourself a moment to relax away from like the hardcore this and two opportunity people there's so much opportunity like we're looking for 50 unit you know complexes right now in la we were looking for 12 unit complexes so i could do a 50 or 100 unit complex for the fund here whereas out in la i got to do a 12 or 15 unit complex and make less money yeah like and, and have a whole lot more legal uh restrictions you know it's yeah it's a uh, there's no business. state taxes in florida i mean there's just like so many <laughs> yeah you think about that like you could just take your state income tax that you don't pay in california and just use that to fly to california for meetings and still that's and still be ahead you know yeah yeah I, I appreciate that tell us about the movie that's coming out next is it that's not hollow point that's another one then right no that's hollow point well crossing over is a movie i wrote that got development funds last year <clears throat> and so I actually have to read the script, okay it, and then we're going to we're going to budgeting. We're going to budgeting, and then we'll go to production. I just you know after I write something, and then someone else like writes a new version of it. I have such a hard time confronting it actually as an artist. So I've really been kicking my tires on this. It's almost been a month. I need to read this shit and get it done with today. But yeah. so that's the new one that we'll produce this year. Um, I don't know if I'll be producing it. I'm sure I'll have a hand in the production, but I'm one of the lead actors in it. So. That's kind of more of what I'm thinking about. And then Hollow Point releases April 9th and the book releases June 8th. Mm. And um, I have a new drink called. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I swear. You just don't I got stop. A, I got a new drink. Where is it at? I got no, I got a picture of it here somewhere. Um, it's an herbal. Well, this is the company. Mm -hmm. See this? Yeah. Wait. Woke up energy shot. Nice. And that's this insignia. Okay. That comes out. I think we're going to launch that launch for drink in April as well. Yeah, I, I work a lot. Now, nah, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't have any distractions, you can do lots of things. I mean, I'm up super early, six o'clock, and I'm working, 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 working. In fact, right before we got on, I was taking a nap because I was just knocked out. I was like, oh, man, I'm tired, man. I need to sleep for a minute. You know, uh, some things suffer. So the gym has suffered quite a bit, but no, it's okay, man. It's okay. I enjoy what I do. I, and think about it this way, like projects, if you have good executives on your projects, you don't have to run them. You got to create them. Like my job as a CEO is to create content. So it's always the same. Like with the drink, I created the drink. I used to work for Whole Foods when I got out of college, you know what I mean? In the nutrition department. So it was like, uh, yeah. it's a passion of mine, you know, nutrition. So. I never had a chance to start the company. I didn't have enough money. You know what I mean? I was too young, you know? So I, I, I opened a company called Wholesome Organics Company, but I just shelled it and held it for five years, you know? So now that I'm here kind of on my own with my girl working on our stuff, like we do the coaching when I coach. So the book, the coaching is based on the book, right? So there wasn't any extra content needed to be created in terms of like me creating the content obviously i have to physically create sure. the book course right yeah so it's like you know these pieces they keep sliding forward and it looks like i'm doing like a shitload of stuff and it kind of is true but it's not because i created the content a long time ago i wrote this movie that we're going to produce five years ago mm. okay see what people don't understand is like 
you got to build things like a mountain. It doesn't, it just doesn't happen overnight. You know what I mean? Now they might all be culminating in the same year, but that doesn't mean they started this year. Fuck no. They all started like a different timelines, like five, five plus years back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in certain things, certain projects need certain amounts of energy at certain times. So exactly getting it up and moving and then hand it off. Hey, take this pro- idea and let's, you know, now you're just having meetings, you know? Yeah. Great. Yeah. I've got, a, I've got Pete on that. Uh, it's going to be good. We'll check in in two weeks and you know, so now yeah. that things moving forward, it doesn't require that much energy from you in terms of mental and, and creative, you know, you're just sort of letting the person run with it. Now I, I get that. And then all of a sudden, these things start to hit. And so there is a, a movie coming out, by the way, that was delayed because of COVID, you know, and so it's like these things just stack up at their own pace because you know, right. movies are, I mean, if you sign a major player who gets paid a lot of money to do movies, they have a very small window where they can do your movie and you might get bumped right. for years just because of for traffic, just movie traffic, you know? So I don't mean the yeah. movie, but just like people have a schedule and they're like, I don't have a three month window for the next 36 months. And you're like, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Like for instance, so we, I signed the movie originally to Lionsgate. Right. And then I signed it now to vertical entertainment Okay. because vertical had a close, like a, a smaller window right. of waiting. Right. So instead of like, like, Hey, my movie was signed to Brandstone Lionsgate, but it won't come out till fucking 2025. You know, I was like, nah, I'm not interested in that. Like, so I re-signed the movie to Vertical ENT and it was supposed to come out last year with a theater release, Right. you know? So it's like, you got to play your cards, you know, considering the runway you're in, you know, right. Cause you're right, dude. The runway is, a, is, is another thing. Like, you know, Maybe we might not be able to produce this because the actors and the director and the producers we want on this might not be ready this year. You know, considering that COVID has knocked back like so many projects, who knows? But then again, I'll find a guy who's, you know, lesser important, but more willing to work. Like, I think that when you're trying to be successful, you got to create products and put them out. You can't just create products and wait for the right person because that right person may never show up. So mm. fuck that right person and just make your shit. You know what I mean? That's what I say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was trying to make this drink and all this time I was like waiting for my friend. Like this is a real example. Like my homie and he's a really good friend of mine, but he's so busy. So I'm like, hey, he's like, yeah, I got this Chinese dude. You know, he can he can put together the drink. You know, he'll help us, this and that. And like I kind of already knew what I wanted in the drink. It's an herbal energy shot. So you're getting the caffeine from herbs. So it's not from the coffee bean or from the tea leaf. So you don't get jitters. It's not a diuretic. It's naturally occurring. So it really helps you to, because um, um, it advances, like uh, the thing about caffeine is that it sucks up all your nutrients. Okay. So it advances graze. It makes you tired. It drains your adrenals, right? So I don't drink caffeine, believe it or not, right? But I'm selling a caffeine drink because I feel like it's important that people have a more healthier option to, 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 you know, wiring up their mind. Right. So obviously I tried it multiple times. I gave it to my, uh, like my old partner who was going to be my partner who drinks like five cups of espresso a day. Yeah. Anyway. So he's telling me, I got this guy, I got this guy. I waited one and a half months for him to get this guy. Then I finally said, fuck that guy. I went on the internet, found a guy who can fucking mix this shit up, paid him and got it made. Yeah. So, so people make this mistake all the time. They go, I'm waiting for this guy because he has this friend who can do this and would be in the game, you know? And then my partner who I wanted to be a partner, he sells a million dollars in, in PP and E a month, right? Masks, right? So I'm like, yeah, I want him to be my partner. I was willing to offer him 40% of my company, which is outrageous. And, but I, you know, I'm waiting for him cause I think he's great. And then he just couldn't get on the train. So I had, I had to, you know, cut him. Right. But now I have, you know, like you see this long thing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is 21 different. Uh, this is 19 ingredients plus bottles and caps, which makes 2021 20, different things. I had to source, buy and send to my bottler. Who's this guy down here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want to do this damn job. You think I want to do this job? No. You think I do it in L.A.? Hell no. I no time at all. Right. But this took me just this took me almost two weeks to source everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, do, I do know what you mean. You know, guys, fucking guys in China, guys here, there, like all over the place. Printer, you know, I mean, it's a fucking mess. But I'll tell you what, that's a billion dollar market. The energy shot is a billion dollars. See, I'm, I come from a finance background. I studied mm-hmm. finance in college, right? So the market cap on energy drinks 
It's 50 billion going to go up to 86 billion in 2026. Right. Energy shots holds 1 billion of that. Mm. Right? So, and 85%, 88% to be exact of the energy shot market is owned by one guy. Who's that guy? Mr. What's the only energy shot you know? <laughs> go to any 7-Eleven. What's the energy shot? Five hour energy. That's right. Ding, 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 ding. I got one in my truck right now, just in case he's. Exactly. So I created a bottle that looks exactly like his. Instead, in terms of size, I put together a formula that's completely different from his because obviously his formula is more about caffeine and mine's more about being healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hope to grab some of that market share. Yeah. Pretty simple. Why not? And then, uh, you know, the problem that a lot of uh, Hollywood, I, I should say a lot of the problem that a lot of successful movie makers have is that they have to make someone else's movie a lot more often than they get to make their own movie because you know yeah. money and whatnot. You're you're fixing that problem by having you've got these courses, you've got this drink, you've got these uh, you know this uh, portfolio of properties. You have an ambient flow of of money, so you don't have to just go hat in hand. You can say here are all the, first off, here's all the things I create. I know how to do this. But also, I constantly don't need you guys. You're not supposed to produce with your own money, but that's because those people only are in Hollywood. You know, you were like, right. this money's not going to stop. Like, if this $8 million I spend on this movie doesn't work out, we'll be fine, you know, because yeah, <laughs> more money coming in. So you're building your own production house capacity that has, not that you want to waste money, but you don't have to be holding to somebody else. No, you don't. But I think you, here, here's my thought on that. And this is kind of like, this is a course I will ultimately right like when it comes to money there's there's a couple of very important kind of like tenants one is the value of debt right which is like understanding how much you should use and not use debt which i don't think people understand um the other one is the value of using other investors example case in point i had a bunch of people who were interested in the way i did business and they wanted to invest in what i do and i didn't want to take their money individually. So I wrapped it into a fund. That's how I have the money in the first place, right? right? Their money. I went and found a company through a friend that I thought would do really well. Okay. So I did the due diligence on it because I come from a finance background. I can actually evaluate prop, uh, you know, companies based on my skill set, right? It's called discounted cash flow. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a financial model. Anyway, with that said, Evaluated the company. I thought they would do well. I got a bunch of investors to invest in it. I didn't put one dollar in that company, not one fucking dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got everybody else's money. Okay. They 3X, the company 10X, and we almost 4X in three years. And now everyone's getting paid out, and so am I. I'm getting paid out lots of money, but I didn't put a dollar in. So there's a value, you know, there's a value in using other people's money. Like, for instance, in my first film, yeah, fuck yeah, I use my own money. Am I going to use my own money in this film? Fuck no, not a million years. <laughs> fuck no, I'm not going to use my own money. Why would I do that? Why would I use my own money when I have proof of concept? We had four awards in that film, Hollow Point. Four awards. We won Best Action Film in Austin. We won um, Best Actor, Best you been, Stuntman. Been best Stuntman or something? Or is that somebody else? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't win any awards. I only won Best Action Film because I produced it, right? Okay, so. Okay. But I didn't win like best actor. I think that was uh, uh, our guy, uh, Luke Goss, who won that. Best stuntman was another guy, you know, who was Luke Goss's stuntman. And then best something else and then best action film, right? Yeah. So like for me, it's all about proof of concept. You know what I mean? Proof of concept and then rock and roll. You know, like in music, you know, I don't, I don't have to pay for anything because I've made enough money in music as a musician. You know, as an actor, I didn't have that skill. So I built it around me. In LA, they always say, oh, you can't. Oh, you know what, man? Be be productive. You know, do it yourself. Do it yourself. That's the LA mantra. Like, oh man, do it yourself, man. Show me what you've done so I can do something for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, here, Dick Wad, here's what I've done. <laughs> now you want to do something for me? Yeah. No, but at that point, you don't need them, right? right. At that point, you get the real legit, you get the legit people who want to do it. So yeah. like I, I didn't pay for development for this film. No. Development was given to me by someone else. You know what I mean? Like I do. People want to work with you when you have success. So I think the first step is like, so let just the first step is like, try to create your own success. Maybe yes, using your own money. But after you've finished using your own money, the value of debt and the value of investors is 
so valuable. Mm. You should use other people's money. Absolutely. And also you should just tell them what it is, right? Like on a movie, if someone gives us money, there's going to be a, a long paperwork that says, listen, bro, you could lose all of your money. You should know that. So this should be like the money you spend on a McLaren. Don't spend it on the McLaren and spend it on this film. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah totally. Yeah. And if you don't know that movies are, are risky, then you know, come on. It's so crazy. Yeah. Right, let's, let's. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll work from LA. We know that. So. Yeah. Right, right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And also the, uh, uh, the list of way people get paid out, you know, and a lot of people get paid before a lot of other folks, you know? Yeah. It's called a waterfall. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's not get distracted by that. I want to get back to this uh, this singer uh, songwriter guy that I was watching today on YouTube. Are you trying to get everybody laid? Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. I want to get back to this uh, this singer, uh, songwriter guy that I was watching today on YouTube. Are you trying to get everybody laid? Because <laughs> I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> um, I think you know the. Are you talk, you're talking about the book, right? Well, well, the book too, but like your music in general, like it's you know it, it all combines together. I mean, you've got some great songs in there, and they are oh. definitely some soulful, you know ladies loving dudes kind of songs, you know, and, and that's one of the things we've always loved here on the show is, you know, Harry Connick Jr. Getting everybody in the audience laid that night, you know, yeah. And Wayne well, I think yeah. Tony, 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 making sure everybody goes home, you know, <laughs> together with somebody, you know, even if it's their own special someone, those, those extra looks. So we always appreciate that. Dude, I got to tell you something, man. When I stopped rapping, one of the major resolutions I had about writing songs was, to stop writing about hate and antagonism and start writing about love, you know? And I can't, that, that's been, because the thing is, it's like, it's true, right? People say you want your goal, you want to achieve your goals, write them down. It's the same thing with music. If you're going to write down a bunch of garbage and then sing it and keep reciting it every time you perform, you don't think that might happen to you? You don't think rappers who didn't live a thug life, who started talking about it, ended up having to live a thug life? Absolutely, it happens. I spoke out against a terrorist group. They attacked me. They tried to kill me for years. It's a true statement. I did that. I'm responsible for that. You understand? I talk about love. People fall in love. Like I'm responsible for the, for the communication that I imbue on the world. It's also imbued upon me. You get what I'm saying? Like what I say constantly. It's like a mantra. If you say every day, you know, may the world be love versus like, you know, Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my God, good luck for the rest of your life. You're not, your world is going to be what you write and what you say and what you recite. So I made a resolution to recite what I wanted to see in the world and, and in my own life. And so, yes, my answer is yes, absolutely. <laughs> I want people to fall in love. I want people to be happy. I want them to see the positive sides of other people instead of the negative. I want them to not disparage others. You know, there's a lot of times you can say, I hate that guy versus you could say, hey, he could be a better guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a huge difference in the two ways of communicating that. Everybody could be a better guy. So there's nothing wrong in saying that, right? Yep. But yeah. saying I hate that guy is like, you know, it's trash. You know, it doesn't work. It's, it creates antagonism. Hate is a, uh, it's a double lockbox. You know, the person you hate, you know, now like can no longer get into your heart. And then too, you've locked your heart in from somebody else, you know, like, you, yeah, you know, I know. and we've got enough intolerance and bigotry in this nation and everybody wants to point at fingers at somebody else. Like you got to put your finger at yourself first. Can I tolerate? Yeah, I can't tolerate Straight Nazis. Up. Well, you can work at it. You can work on trying to understand. You don't got to condone, but you can understand, you know? Yeah, you can have empathy. You don't have sympathy. I'm looking for my – hold on one second. I'm looking for something that you would like. I'm just wondering why it's not here. Well, it's usually so right oh, there. That I would like. I will fill this time up and say, hey, everybody, it's the Break It Down Show. If you could, click on that, 
subscribe button and hit, ring that bell. That way you know when we do stuff. Here comes, yeah, here's the there's the love making machine. I've got my guitar back there too. We'll do a do. I know. I saw, I saw. I'm about to give you the chords. You can see. You can play it with me. <laughs> Let's see if I can get. Let me just tune this up. Uh, I know we're doing an interview, but I figured fine. hey, it's live, and I can cut all this stuff out for the podcast side. And the live folks, they get it. By the way, the last guy to play the guitar live on this show was John Davidson, who's a legend in Hollywood. I mean, he has been around <laughs> forever, and he has such a ball of energy, and, and we can't mm -hmm. wait to have him back on. The show failed because he was in Mexico, and the internet there sucked, but man, it was, uh, it was really neat to have John Davidson on, and I can't wait to have him back. On his I'm just trying to remember if I can remember this song. It's all right. It's a good time. I think that's how it goes. All right. Some folks say that it's hard enough. People always break enough. Most of the time, I would say this is true. To the day that I met you, smiles come easy. And you understand me, there's not much more to say. And when we fight, we'll make love before it gets away. Cause I will always be in love with you, be in love with you, be in love. Cause you make it so easy to love you, easy to love you, easy to love. Oh, I do 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 Crazy ups and downs, people wanting more, and you never give them back. But when you're around me, you understand me, there's not even me to work. And when we fight, we'll make it love before anyone gets hurt. Yeah. Cause I will always be in love with you, be in love with you. Cause you make it so easy to love you, easy to love you, easy to love. Whoa, I do 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 Cause I will always be in love with you, be in love with you, be in love. Cause you make it so easy to love you, easy to love you. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. That was fantastic. We were talking about love and I had that song in my head, so I thought I'd play it for you. Yeah, no, we all thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, I love that, man. I love that you took time to play that. And it does. It's, it, it feeds the loveness in our soul, you know. And, and if not art, what does that? You know, I mean, maybe it's yeah. your, maybe it's your, your loved one. But, yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll have to check those chords out and try to learn how to play that myself. I'll have to bring it down a, bring it down a key or two. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think quite high, actually. I, I didn't realize that until I became a singer. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, well, hey, that works for me. You got to go where you can do it. 
let me yeah. ask you about these courses though. I mean, since, okay. So yes, you can sing and you can make a lady love, but you can also read a book like how to be more confident with women. Five easy steps. Or is it five? Yeah. Seven easy steps for a genuine guy. So this is not like a Lothario book. It's like, Hey, you can be genuine, but how do you get some confidence? All right. Yeah. Take us down this Avenue. Explain what's going on. Yeah. So, so here's, here's my thought on this whole thing. Right. And this, this is the honest truth. If you're not meeting a woman the same way you meet a man, then you're not winning a woman in the right way. Now, a lot of people, they don't get that. They go, I don't get it. Because every time you approach somebody, before you approach it, it's like two steps. There's an intention, and then there's the approach. You have to intend before you approach. And so when I approach another man, or any man approaches another man, their ability to have or not have that communication is so hot. They can approach a guy in a bar who's watching a Lakers game and be like, what about them Lakers? And that guy can be like, yeah, dude, LeBron's killing it. And they'll be like, yeah, let me grab a beer and we'll chat, right? Or he can be like, fuck the Lakers. I like Miami Heat. And he'd be like, all right, that's nice. And he grabs his beer and maybe they don't chat. But either way, they wouldn't give a fuck because they're talking to a guy. You get what I'm saying? Yep. yep. Because all they were offering was genuine conversation and they were just being friendly. You get what I'm saying? But the moment you switch that to a girl – it's like, does she like me? Can I get her number? Is she going to sleep with me? I'm trying to make her my girlfriend. Like all this extra shit intention goes in there, which destroys a man's ability to communicate with a woman freely. You get what I'm saying? Because they're constantly thinking, I want to have an outcome. I want an outcome. And it's contrived. And that contrived idea of wanting to have an outcome is what ruins their ability to speak to women and it ruins their confidence. And that's really the basis of the whole book. The basis of the book is like, look, man, this is, we're not trying to get women in bed. We're, we're trying to meet them. Like you want a soulmate, you're going to have to be your friend. Guess what? You know what I mean? Like newsflash, buddy, like your soulmate is going to be your best friend. If she's not your best friend, she's not your soulmate. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so the whole book is based around that step. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you can, can you see this at all? We can see it, but I can't make it up. Here, I'll make it bigger. You can't. There you go. So like, if I were to just, just like, just this side, cause I need this side because this helps me think, but like, you say seven steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? One is the approach, right? The next one I call touch and go. So here's another one that happens so often, right? With people is like they meet a girl yeah. and they go, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Can I buy you a drink? Let's just say, right? Like back in our day, we were frivolous, uh, shrivelous, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shriv had chivalry. And we would do that. We'd open a door, buy a drink, right? Nowadays, people are like, I'm buying you shit. Fuck you. It's like, whoa, calm down. Don't you like, open relax. a door for me? I'm empowered. Like, okay, great. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it gets a little crazy, right? But let's say, and now you sit down, you're having a conversation with this girl, and then you feel like because you bought her a drink, you get to hang around there for like 25 minutes. No, you don't. No, you don't. And if you actually like give a shit about like having the communication that was real, you'd say hi, you'd introduce yourself, and then you'd go. Because that way the conversation doesn't get awkward and weird when you first meet somebody, right? And I talk about three touches and the importance of that. Then from there, I go from uh, touch and go, I want to say is, uh, man, I don't remember the chapters in my own book. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got a recipe for your uh, energy drink behind. You got a lot of stuff in your head already. So <laughs> I think Let the point just... is, is <laughs> yeah, that's Brad writing about you breaking it down on the Break It Down show. The, the thing about these steps though, is, is you're just treating someone like a human, you know, and if you can start yeah, right. there, you've, you've got other possibilities besides mate or don't mate, you know, like it can be, right. Hey, you know what I, we, turns out we both love the Steelers. Let's, uh, let's hang out. Maybe you just become friends. Maybe you, know, you decide to do some business, a zillion things that can happen. If you start by treating the person like a human rather than a conquest. I totally Oh agree yeah. That. I totally agree with you too, man. Look, so I'm sorry. So the first one was, I'm sorry. It's not. Touching the first one's watch and learn. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so what does watch and learn I mean? Most people think watch and learn means like watch what the players do and then do that and learn that. And that. No, watch and learn is like look at your environment, 
see who actually wants to have a conversation with someone else and who doesn't. And in there, I talk about loners, stragglers, and groupers. <laughs> I don't want to get too deep into it because we could yeah. be here all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just talk about different types of people, people who are looking to have a conversation and people who aren't. So you watch and learn your environment, step one. Know your approach to be genuine and kind and nice. Step two, know your environment. Step three, after you, now you know your environment, you use your approach to meet them. Then you touch and go. So then you say hi, introduce yourself, be polite, and then get the fuck out of there so you can move on. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to look for this book. How to be more. There's so many. Dylan, Delon's book on DelonJCourses.com. It's there. You can download it. And all that stuff is available. Well, actually, you can get it on Amazon now. It's on Amazon too. Okay. All right. I'll grab that. Yeah. So I'll throw it in. Yeah. It's on Amazon, which is so cool. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Nobles, uh, dot com, and it'll be printed. Chapter three. Okay. So chapter three is chapter four. Step is let me get you back on. I can't even see you. Where are you? Here I am. Oh. So chapter four is a hierarchy. This this one you're gonna love. You're from LA. So what's the hierarchy? The hierarchy is power in numbers, right? So what's the power in numbers? Power in numbers is the more people you come with, the more people want to be a part of your group. <laughs> and and this is where I defunct and debase this thing about money. A lot of people think like if you have more money, people you're more popular. That's bullshit because a social setting, the actual relative, uh, relative. Um, you know, popularity or coolness of a social setting is about how social you are. It's like if you were in a in a, in a sports uh, if you were in a sports team, the relative uh, kind of coolness setting is how good you are at the sport, right? Yeah. If if you, you get what I'm saying, so 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 yeah. in a social setting, the relative coolness points is how social you are. So. Mm-hmm. You could take a guy who rolls up in a Rolls Royce and sits by himself and then put him against a guy with a, you know, a, ch- a T-shirt and jeans, you know, with two of his guy friends laughing and having a good, good time. I guarantee you people are going to want to meet those guys, those three guys faster than the other guy. And then you bring one of their girlfriends in there and then you bring another, uh, you know, a girl in there. And the next thing you know, you got a group of five people, three guys and two girls all laughing, having a good time and some random dude sitting in the bar. Sorry, dude, the guy with the money at the bar, no game, no, no game. game, no game, no game. Yeah. Right. So, so this is hierarchy, the power of numbers. And I teach people actually, believe it or not, I teach people how to walk into the bar by themselves and use the hierarchy to their advantage. Nice. So most, most people don't know how to do that at all. And I do it literally all the time and it's very simply it's very simply just as an answer is uh, you know very simply you walk in you meet people and then you introduce people to people and people always think the people you're introducing to those people are your people now i'm not saying you should lie about it i'm just saying that's the way it is you get what i'm saying i I know exactly what you're saying no i love it this is this is great stuff the the (laughs) the super busy impactful inspirational mind of delon J uh, on display here on the break it down show he's continuing to lay out the uh the program you're a busy dude man you're fascinating you have multiple facets to what you do and i'm always on the go and and you're my kind of guy i mean i take naps every day i'm like oh my body says shut down i go shut down i take a nap i wake Hell up yeah. and get back to work you know Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that shit. I don't know why people feel they need to go a thousand all day. Like, dude, if you got to rest, rest. My Otherwise like, your brain is good. My doctor said, you don't get good sleep in your nap. And I'm like, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so yeah, seriously. 100% agree. Yeah. So chapter five or step five is diversify your risk. It doesn't mean go fuck tons of bitches. Yeah. It means that it means that you, you, if you're putting all your cards in one basket as usual, you're really making it very risky for you to get what you want. And like the law of entropy very clearly states that the more things that you put into a system, the more randomity is going to happen. And that's actually what you're looking for because here your intention is just to be a friend. And if you're just being a friend and you go and you, and you watch and learn and you touch and go and you use the power of three, so you're meeting people three or four people every time, you know, and you're going back and meeting them again and again, you'll soon start introducing these people to these people and these people to these people. And that will increase your chances of meeting the right person for you. That's what diversify your risk is. It doesn't like mean like go, go, you know, 
find a girl that you're dating and then date five more. That's bullshit. I don't agree with that. And I'm not, I would never subscribe to that. Right. Um, number six is build your network. And what does that mean? See, a lot of people think build your network means like put on a name tag and go to a business meeting. I'm saying, fuck off. That's not what we're doing. We're having fun. Build your network is find the things you like to do that are fun to you and join clubs that do those things. So that way you're in a place where you already have similar reality with the people that you're going to meet because that's actually what you're going to need in a relationship. If your girl, like my girl, if she didn't like entertainment, you think we could date? Fuck no in a million years. If she, all she did was finance, she'd bore the shit out of me and I would be so <laughs> irritating to her. You understand? Like I it would irritate her. So the idea of building your network is yeah, go to meetups. Like I have guys in my course right now. I make him them go to meetup.com. I'm, I make them write down the five things that they love. I make them go to the meetups. Like it's very action oriented. Like you can imagine just talking to me. Like, obviously I'm not letting them fucking fuck off. You want to do this course. A it's serious. I don't have a lot of time. So if I'm going to teach you, you got to want to do this course. You understand? And you got to do the course. If you're not, if you don't want to do it, get on out. I'm not doing this for money. You know what I mean? Like obviously people got to pay, but unless you're paying me millions of dollars, it's not going to be that valuable to me in that way. It's valuable because I like to teach and I feel like this is really going to help guys. And they, and it has who are so shy. Like they get on the, like they'll start off on the screen like this, bro. I shit you not. Yeah. Step one. Light. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. No light in their face. I can't see their eyes. They're shifty. You know what I mean? That's how they start. Some of them. Right. So, so I tell them like, sit up straight, look at me, you know, get close. I teach them the value of communication, not having a via, which means like, instead of like, um, you know, wearing glasses, taking glasses off so I can see you. So I'm not looking through a via, you know what I mean? Now, these are guys who obviously are very shy to begin with. So they have to learn to confront another human being, which is like, like, you know, that's kind of senior to almost everything. It's like that confronting another human being is like way out here. Like right. it's senior to all of this. Right. Anyway. So build your network. And then the last one is um, know what you're looking for and have fun. Know what you're looking for, right? And have fun. I know you can't read this because I'm not <laughs> writing it that properly. Have fun. And the whole point of that is um, that's the chapter that I think actually my course is going to end up as chapter one. Because I have guys who have been in like disaster relationships taking care of women's kids, getting cheated on, like all sorts of shit, right? Like spending five years, you know, raising somebody else's kids and then getting cheated on by this girl. You know what I mean? Like yeah. crazy stories, you know, like really sad. Let me tell you something, like we, we're from LA, so we, we might be like sharks when it comes to being men, right? We might know the game, but the guys out there, they don't, man. And they're getting fucking torn to shreds by these girls. Like I've heard stories, I'm like, wow, that, that's like a dude move. You know, that's, I didn't hear, I didn't heard a girl do something like that. So know what you're looking for. I talk about very, very important, like four things, um, which is energy here. I, on, let me just pull it because I want to make sure I get it right. Cause it's actually really important. Um, let me just look here for the triangles. Um, I talk about dumping the apps because the apps make you just look at everybody's bodies instead of their personalities. Yeah. So I talk about similar intelligence, shared interest, energy level, and belief system. And um, I talk about how to identify someone of a similar intelligence, how to identify what is a shared interest, how to identify energy level and belief system. And belief system isn't about your religion. It's about what you believe. Like I, like, do you guys believe in, in, in having a conversation when you're in a fight or do you guys need to go to different corners and cool down? You know, do you believe in kids? Do you, uh, believe that we should help the world? Do you believe that you should sit back and wait for someone to call you because you know, you're that good at whatever it is that you do belief system. So this is, this, this, this actually seems to be, uh, for the guys who have been torn, like, you know, like war torn through relationships. This really is chapter one for them when I teach them. Because I don't think they really knew. Because we as guys, man, I'll be honest, man, I'm guilty of this shit too. I meet a girl, she's hot, we end up sleeping together, and I'm now I'm in a relationship. Yeah. 
you know, and before I know it, I'm in a one year relationship with the wrong girl. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because I have the, and and I really, and you would think that I I have the balls to just tell a girl like, Hey, I want to break it up. I don't, man. I really suck at that. So I'll keep it stringing along for another six months. Now imagine I'm already an outgoing guy. Now imagine a guy who can't just say no, right? Yeah. Cause it's hard for me to say no too. He'll just string that shit along for three years and just being in a dead end relationship. He doesn't want to do And imagine the women who do that too. Like, so chapter seven becomes like the most important. And the, and the thing about this is it's, it's not theory, right? It's just action steps. Like I give you some theory and I say, go do it. You know, like, I'm not going to give you a bunch of theory. Like I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, nor do I care for either one. You know what I mean? Like a lot of guys come to me and they go, why do you think this girl broke up with me? And I go, bro, I'm not here to tell you to, to, to figure out what happened to you in the past. I'm here to help you move forward in the present. You know, if you want to analyze your past, you can do that with somebody else. I'm not here for that. I'm not your psychologist. I'm here to teach you how to be confident with women and be the best version of yourself in present time, you know? So a lot of the conversations we have is like bringing guys to present time because half of their mind, they're standing here like this as a human, right? And this is like almost everybody in life. Half of their mind is like going back to the past, to all these old memories. So like most of the people you talk to, they're like zombies because they're not even talking to you. You're talking to like one one hundredth of them and the rest of them is back there in some weird event that happened, who the fuck knows what the fuck they're thinking? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so this is the book on the Break It Down show. I just right. broke it down. Yeah, and you broke out some laws of thermodynamics too. You know, and, and my, my, there you go. My favorite is the zero with because someone's like, "Hey, this one comes first. and they're like, "Well, we already have a first law. They're like, "Well, this one's the zero with." <laughs> so four <laughs> laws of thermodynamics, everybody, go uh, look that up. And if you can understand that, you can understand a lot of life. Hey man, I appreciate you coming on. You should yeah. come back and let's uh, let's do some more of these because uh, you're good at it and uh, interesting to talk to. Absolutely, thanks, man. I really love this interview. This is fun. We got to race around and jump through all sorts of hoops. It was hella good. I, this is fun <laughs> as hell. Yeah. I'd love to come back. Let me uh, let me just plug a couple things here for you. So if you guys want more, look. The bottom line is this: if you want more about uh, Delon, you can just go to his website. Just type in Delon J, or just type in Delon Music on YouTube. Uh, if you can't find these things, you can always look in the show notes. You can also go to his courses, DelongeCourses.com. Super simple. And then, of course, go to Amazon and type in that link or just type in Delonge and then, you know, how to. And you probably will get what you need. You can always get those links here because it's always great when you subscribe, especially if you do the PayPal thing. I mean, that's a great way to support the show. I'll put that money right back into it. And uh, continuing to get great people like Jay who break uh, Delon, who break things down for us in such a clear fashion. It's just, uh, it's great, man. I really appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us. It was great. Yeah, dude, this was fun. Man. I really liked it. Got me pumped up. I think I'm ready to go to the gym now. <laughs> <laughs>